following program is produced by the Living Church of God. There are many strange beliefs about life after death. Even professing Christianity teaches a variety of conflicting ideas. Does everyone go either to heaven or hell at death? What will happen to you? What really happens when you die? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World, The Living Church of God, presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith, Richard Ames, bringing you the good news of your future in Tomorrow's World. This week, Richard Ames asks, what happens when you die? And now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. We are all personally concerned about life after death. Some of us are very worried about our future after death. Will we end up in a hellfire as soon as we breathe our last breath? Or perhaps we're confident that we'll go to heaven to be with the Lord. What happens when you die? Science has its own answers to the question. But scientists admit they cannot measure or test the spiritual realm. Some individuals pay vast sums of money to flash freeze their bodies at death in hopes that science someday will find a way to revive them and give them long life. The science of cryogenics has commercial applications. As one science commentator stated, quote, Every year, little by little, technology is conquering disease, aging, and perhaps even death itself, end of quote. The author, John C. Snyder, titled his website article, quote, Better Living, Hopefully, Through Cryonics, end of quote. My friends, science cannot and will not ever be able to give you or anyone eternal life. But let me ask you, who gave you and all human beings life in the first place? Was it random chance? How incredible it is that so many evolutionists reject the overwhelming evidence of creation. Some contradict their own scientific evidence and replace it with a blind faith of their own. Listen to this quote by George Wald from an article entitled The Origin of Life in a 1954 Scientific American. Quote, the reasonable view was to believe in spontaneous generation, the only alternative to believe in a single primary act of supernatural creation. There is no third position. One is only to contemplate the magnitude of this task to conceive that the spontaneous generation of a living organism is impossible. Yet here we are as a result, I believe, of spontaneous generation. End of quote. A writer for a science magazine says that spontaneous generation is impossible and yet believes it to be true. My friends, let's understand. There is an all-powerful God who created all things, and He is the God of the Bible. As we've pointed out on previous programs, true science and the Bible perfectly harmonize. But the Bible reveals deeper spiritual and eternal truth, which science admittedly cannot discover. Death is an enemy. All physical life is susceptible to death. No one is born with immortal life. One of the greatest trials in life is facing the death of a loved one, particularly if it's sudden and unexpected. We sorrow and mourn over such loss. Our family and friends are very precious to us. Whether death strikes at a young age or at the end of a long life, we experience the pain of loss, and we wonder, Will we ever see them again? When we consider the end of life, we ask, is there any hope for the future? Yes, there is hope for the future. There's hope for your deceased son, daughter, husband, wife, relative, or friend. How do we know there's hope? Because God Almighty, the creator of life itself, reveals the truth in your Bible. If you have a Bible, be sure to have it with you when you join us on Tomorrow's World. You'll also want to be prepared to write down scriptural references and the address and phone number for the free audio tape we're offering on this program. You can also order our free literature on our website, tomorrowsworld.org. 
The awesome truth is that God is creating in His truly converted children righteous, godly character. The Apostle Peter stated that Christians are partakers of God's divine nature through His precious promises. You can read about that in 2 Peter 1, verse 4. God gives us a lifetime to learn lessons that should benefit our character. But when one dies, what happens? Is there a different fate for those who are faithful Christians and for those who have never been converted? There are two chapters that clearly explain our real hope and our future after death. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Turn first to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. The Apostle Paul wants us to know the truth about the resurrection. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. This is a very important passage. First of all, notice that the Apostle Paul refers to death as a sleep. He does not describe dead Christians as being active or alive in heaven. They are asleep or dead until the coming of Christ, his second coming. Now let's continue in verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Notice again that the resurrection takes place at Christ's second coming, as it says in verse 16, with the trumpet of God. That's the last trumpet, the seventh trumpet described in the book of Revelation. Notice also, and this is very important, the same verse, verse 16, and the dead in Christ will rise first. True Christians who have died are not resurrected until Christ returns. Those of us who are alive when Christ returns will join those who have been dead all these centuries and millennia, now resurrected to receive the promised gift of eternal life. That is what all genuine Christians look forward to. The resurrection is the hope of a Christian. At one time, the Apostle Paul was being judged and examined by the Jerusalem Sanhedrin. Paul made the resurrection the major issue. He spoke to the assembly of both Pharisees and Sadducees. You can read about this confrontation in Acts the 23rd chapter. Acts 23 and verse 6. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Concerning the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am being judged. Was Paul saying that he would go to heaven when he died? Absolutely not. Paul was looking forward to the resurrection from the dead at the return of Christ. Read it in your own Bible. In the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul spoke of his faith in Christ and his future goal of the resurrection. Philippians 3 and verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. My friends, as shocking as it may sound, the Bible teaches that when one dies, he or she remains dead until the resurrection. The Apostle Paul refers to deceased Christians as those who sleep in Jesus. We saw that in 1 Thessalonians 4.14. Sleep is used here as a metaphor for death. But surely there must be some sinners right now being tormented in an ever-burning hellfire. The shocking answer is absolutely not. You need to study into this subject. The question of life after death is extremely important. You probably have many more questions that need answering. For example, if there is an immortal soul in each human, how do you explain the condition of death as a sleep? which we've seen the Bible plainly teaches. And can souls actually die? We'll answer those questions in the next part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you a free one-hour audio tape entitled, Is There Life After Death? 
There are so many misconceptions about heaven, hell, and the resurrection. You need to study what the Bible plainly teaches. With this audio tape, you'll have the opportunity for personal Bible study on your own time. This free audio tape will give you the exciting, incredible information from your Bible that gives hope far beyond the limited concepts held by most professing Christians. You'll learn the amazing truth about the three general resurrections and our wonderful hope for the future. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free one-hour audio tape entitled, Is There Life After Death? This audio tape will give you the biblical references, and you'll be able to study on your own time and at your own convenience. Just pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy, Is There Life After Death? Just ask for the audio tape on Life After Death. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501304. San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World Magazine. Tomorrow's World Magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. In the first part of our program, we saw that the Bible refers to death as a sleep. The very hope of a Christian is the promised resurrection from the dead. And that takes place at the return of Jesus Christ. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, is called the faith chapter. Here are the heroes and heroines of faith. Did they go to heaven the moment they died? Let's read Hebrews 11 and verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. What promises? The promises of eternal life and inheriting the earth. But having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. As we saw earlier, when Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive at that time will join them in the first general resurrection. Now notice Hebrews 11 and verse 39. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God, having provided something better for us, now note this, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Faithful deceased Christians are waiting in the grave for the return of Christ in the first resurrection. Listen to what Jesus said in John 5 and verse 28. Do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation or judgment, as other translations have it. The hope for all of us is the resurrection. Faithful Christians are resurrected to immortality at the second coming of Christ. Let's understand one important truth. We do not already have immortality. It is a gift from God. Just read Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Notice that the scripture does not state the wages of sin is immortal life in hellfire. The wages of sin is not immortal life, but death, the absence of life. If you already have an immortal soul, if you already have eternal life, then you don't need it as a gift from God. My friends, you need the gift of eternal life because you were not born with it. It's a wonderful gift through our living Savior, Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul describes the dramatic transformation that takes place at the resurrection when the last trumpet announces the return of Christ. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 
So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Victory over death takes place at this great resurrection of faithful Christians. And in the same verse, we see that this mortal must put on immortality. But why should there be a need for immortality if humans already have an immortal soul? The Bible truth reveals that souls are not immortal. A soul can die. For instance, the prophet Ezekiel tells us in Ezekiel 18 and verse 4, the soul who sins shall die. Notice God repeats this important fact in verse 20. The soul who sins shall die. The Hebrew word for soul is nephesh, which means physical or natural life. And the same word nephesh also refers to animal life in Genesis 1 and verse 21. But you may be thinking that's in the Old Testament. So what does the New Testament tell us about souls? Turn in your Bible to Matthew 10 and verse 28, where Jesus is speaking. Matthew 10 and verse 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell, or Gehenna fire. Do you believe your Bible? Do you believe what Jesus said? God is able to destroy Yes, destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. There are many other scriptures that demonstrate that one does not have an immortal soul. As God inspired the prophet Ezekiel to state, the soul who sins shall die. The Bible plainly teaches that souls are mortal, not immortal. But God has a wonderful plan of salvation for all humanity and for you. He wants you to be a part of his family for all eternity. God is love. And he's given the greatest gift you could receive. That's the gift of his son. Jesus Christ paid for your sins. Sin brings upon all of us the death penalty. As it states in Romans 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our sin has earned us, you and me, the death penalty. But God sent his son to pay that penalty so we can be reconciled to God, redeemed by God. Now we can walk in a new way of life and have a new relationship with our Creator. The Apostle James tells us, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. That's in James 4 and verse 8. So God has created us in His own image, in His own likeness. He wants us to have a relationship with Him. But our sin separated us from God, as it tells us in Isaiah 59 and verse 2. Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Now we've been reconciled to God through the death of His Son, through Christ's shed blood. We're no longer separated. We now have direct access to God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. My friends, you were created in God's likeness to have an eternal relationship with Him. And it's to be a loving relationship. But it's God who first demonstrated His love to us. All Christians are familiar with the precious verse or golden verse of the Bible, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The good news is that we will be resurrected. Let's take a look at one example of someone special in the Bible. He was a man of faith listed in Hebrews 11. Ancient King David was a man after God's own heart. Has he gone to heaven, as many believe, or is he still in the grave? In the kingdom of God yet to come on this earth, King David will be the ruler over all the tribes and nations of Israel and Judah. You can read about that in Ezekiel 37, 24, and Jeremiah 30, verse 9, for example. Certainly, David should be in heaven if the righteous go there the moment they die. Well, the Bible plainly points out he's not there. Acts 2 Verse 29, the Apostle Peter gave the very first inspired sermon of the New Testament church on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2.29, Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, David was still dead and buried. Notice this. Peter went on to plainly state in verse 34, 
For David did not ascend into the heavens. Read it in your own Bible. David is awaiting the resurrection as are all the other faithful saints. Many religious people who have been led to believe in the false concept of the immortal soul are worried about their future. Many are frightened because they think that their relatives are being tormented in hell. My friends, the truth is, not one human being who has ever lived and died is now suffering in hellfire. That should be very comforting to you. As we've seen from the Bible, human beings do not have an immortal soul. God inspired the prophet Ezekiel to write twice, The soul who sins shall die. Souls can die. Jesus himself said that God could destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. Your hope and mine is the resurrection from the dead. We'll learn more about that resurrection in the conclusion of the program. But first, I'd like to offer you a free one-hour audio tape entitled, Is There Life After Death? Many believe that there is no life after death, and others believe that immortal souls are writhing in the torments of hell. What does your Bible really say? This free audio tape will give you hope for the future, not only for you, but for your loved ones as well. You'll learn the amazing truth about the three general resurrections, one of which will give millions and billions their first opportunity for salvation. You need this information and hope for the future. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free one-hour audio tape entitled, Is There Life After Death? This audio tape will give you the biblical references, and you'll be able to study on your own time and at your own convenience. So be sure to request your free copy, Is There Life After Death? Just ask for the audio tape on Life After Death. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. So what really happens when you die? Your Bible clearly refers to death metaphorically as a sleep. Jesus referred to his friend Lazarus' death as a sleep. You can read about that in John, the 11th chapter. And we'll be discussing that inspiring episode in next week's program. The dead have no consciousness, as it tells us in Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. The dead experience no conscious passing of time. They know nothing. So in the next split second of their consciousness... They will awake in the resurrection. The comforting news is no human being who has ever lived and died is now suffering. Death is the absence of life. Now, as we've discussed in previous programs, there is a human spirit, not an immortal soul. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so... No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. The patriarch Job stated this, But there is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. That's in Job 32 and verse 8. That spirit combined with the human brain gives humans mind power, totally unavailable to animals. But the human spirit is not a soul and does not have a consciousness apart from the human mind. When one becomes a truly converted Christian, the Holy Spirit combines with the Spirit in man, and he or she becomes a begotten child of God. Then the converted Christian grows in the grace and knowledge of Christ, as it says in 2 Peter 3, verse 18. By Christ living in us, we become transformed into the very nature and mind of Christ. We now have God's character, love, and nature. Then we all look forward to the return of Christ and the seventh trumpet, when the great resurrection takes place. That's the time when 
This corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53. How can we have such hope and faith? Because the Savior of the world was dead, buried, and resurrected. Here is what the Apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We have a living hope because Christ rose from the dead. He was dead. Some believe that Jesus preached to spirits in hell while his body remained in the grave. That is totally false. Jesus was dead. He said so. Turn in your Bible to Revelation 1 and verse 18. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Jesus was dead and in the grave, or in the heart of the earth, three days and three nights, just as he said in Matthew 12 and verse 40. Hundreds saw him after his resurrection. It states that in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 6. Yes, our hope is in the resurrection. But what is the fate of the billions of people over the past several thousand years who never had a real opportunity for salvation? What will happen to your friends and relatives who died not knowing the true way to salvation? You'll learn the answers to those questions on next week's program titled, The White Throne Judgment. You won't want to miss it. In the meantime, be sure to call or write for the inspiring free one-hour audio tape, Is There Life After Death? Just ask for your free copy of life after death. The truth of your Bible is comforting and inspiring. Thank God for His salvation and the resurrection. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World program. Dr. Meredith and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting future for all humanity revealed in your Bible. So join us again next week right here at this same time. This informative audio tape is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.